So hello friends welcome back to Romcart. Today in this video I am going to review the Pixel OS Android 14 for Realme 6 and 5 devices which includes Realme 6, 6i, G90, Realme 7, Narzo 20 Pro and Narzo 30 4G. So I am basically reviewing this build which is of 16 November but you should install the 24th November build because it is the latest one and some bugs are fixed actually like in the build i'm using there is no carrier aggregation and engineering mode is crashing and also there is no face unlock i mean there is but it does not work actually so you should use the latest build where all bugs are fixed but still the rom performs very well and it's really smooth i will talk about everything in this video so let's get to the review so this is typical android 14 build and this build directly comes from pixel 7 pro so whenever you enter your email id you will get a notification in your previous logged in device that your account has been logged in a pixel 7 pro that means this device is now proved to pixel 7 pro so first of all in the wallpaper and style first of all just see the smoothness in the animation it's butter smooth i will say and not just in this animation you open anything you get a smooth animation everywhere in this rom and this is pixel os so there's a legacy that it is the smoothest android 14 or i mean smoothest rom for realme 6785 devices and here you can see there is butter like smoothness and the recent style looks like this basically and the select feature is working fine so i was in the wallpaper and style so in wallpaper and style you get lock screen and home screen you can customize both the uis now in lock screen let me go back in the lock screen you get clock color and size where you can set the color and the size also you can set the small and the dynamic now in home screen you get option to customize the wallpaper also in the lock screen and in wallpapers you get some extra options like minerals life then art seascapes okay if i open the options you can see there's a lot of new wallpapers that are added and previously we saw that in android 14 we are getting emoji workshop where you get random pattern of some emoji that you select when you edit emoji you can add any emoji that you want and that will be displayed on the wallpaper and you can also customize the color i mean the size and the pattern so this is the settings that we know but in this build I saw a new thing that is the AI wallpaper. So what is AI wallpaper? When you click on the AI wallpaper, you get these options and when you click on one of these, you get to see the options. Now here you can customize the letters like instead of agate, you can choose the aquamarine, azure or anything. Let's choose the bismuth. So the sentence is or you can say the prompt is a close up a close up image of bismuth with warm hues so instead of warm we can also use like neon so let's create a wallpaper so you can actually use ai for creating wallpapers but it takes a lot of time although we should not expect that much feature so it will basically take some time we will skip this and also you can choose the wallpaper from here the the predetermined wallpapers are also great so this is an addition that we get in this build and we also get the themed icons and app grid and in the widgets the ui is like the previous builds there is no change and in the home settings we get the google pixel launcher that is used and here we get at a glance and in settings we can customize the at a glance widget and we get search preference now talking about the quick setting panel the quick setting panel looks like previous builds there's no change and we get the active apps now when I slide to this side we get the realme direct and the enable USB options and all these options are added in the Sionic lab I will show that later in this video and now just have a closer look to the tiles here we get heads up nearby share realme direct and enable USB OTG so I added these four options basically these options are were in this section and you can also add mic access camera access and location access then we have font size control switch data card calculator notification or all the settings so this was the quick setting panel and and you can see the animation of the quick setting panel when i pull down and pull up and just notice the smoothness so i will suggest you please try this rom once if you want to try a smooth rom this is the smoothest android 14 rom that i am using till now so let's get to the settings without wasting more time so in the about phone we get the radio info and in the android version we get the kernel info that is 4.14.333 sionic kernel and the android version is android 14 yeah it will work the typical android 14 
easter egg then in the system we get the keyboard control and the gestures and in gestures we get quickly open camera 100 mode navigation mode press and hold power button for these controls and in this option we get the advanced restart which is an essential option for custom roms then we get the swipe to screenshot playback control quick torch double tap to check phone etc then we get the developer options right here okay so now we have the Sionic Lab. So in Sionic Lab, we get the charging control that is basically the smart charging. Then we get performance profile, CPU governor and thermal configuration. So these three options are very essential for tweaking the performance of your device. So the performance profile is the thing that you know actually. It was there for all of the custom ROMs basically both RUI1 and RUI2 and we have the CPU governor. So this section is that one which I talked in the franco kernel manager video so in this section the performance is the option that you may want to choose because there you get the maximum performance then we have the thermal configuration so you can disable the thermal services to get maximum performance then we have the gp features so you can basically tweak the gp frequency and if you have realme 7 you can choose the 900 megahertz and it is clearly mentioned that it's for g95 although i did not try it but the maximum frequency for g90 is 806 megahertz so if you want to be on safe zone you can choose the 806 megahertz which also gives a great performance then you can disable the log cat then we have the screen battery optimization ambient display so the ambient display is basically for amoled displays it's not useful for lcds then we have the usb otg option fps overlay tcp ip configuration the latching unsignaled buffers and mtk engineering mode and the mtk engineering engineering mode is crashing as mentioned in the post so if you try the latest build the mtk engineering mode will work perfectly fine and here we get the sionic lab which is basically the information of the developer so this build is made by official pew it now in the sound features we get the bass loudness which i actually turned off then we have the realme direct sound enhancer which is working perfectly fine i have tested it if you use this you will not need to use the viper for normal usage the realme direct is great and we have the clear speaker okay so this is it basically for the settings there is nothing extra in the pixel os because there is no dedicated customizations and still i will show the settings and for display we have smooth display and post peak refresh rate and in network and internet we get the private dns there is no predefined options yeah so this is it now let's see the performance that we get so if i go to screenshot you can see so this was the performance when we used the performance script without using any custom kernel this was all stock i just used the performance script with the mtk file manager and you can see the graph is like this the cpu throttled 86 percent of its maximum performance although this app is built for lower versions than android 14 i mean it it works up to android 13 but for android 14 it does not utilizes the full resources of the device because it's made for lower builds and this one was the default performance i mean without using any of these three options i got this performance so here we get a typical amount of throttling you can see the graph is not good it fluctuates a lot and the performance is 78 percent only and i think i will now never get 100 percent performance or no cpu thermal throttling because my device is now three years old so i don't think i will get 100 percent performance and this screenshot is when these three settings were turned on i had set the performance profile to performance the cpu governor to performance and i disabled the thermal configuration and i got this much performance you can see the graph is the graph becomes like this and the cpu throttles 86 percent of its maximum performance so this is it talking about the stock applications we get all the google apps by default given the safety and the dialer that is used is the google dialer so there is no call recording feature so yeah this is it for the overview now let's get to a quick gaming test so guys let's start the bgmi from the cape mark so guys i'm basically using the gfx tool to unlock 90 fps let me show you the settings that i'm using so in gfx tool i am using 90 fps and the ram management is not that good you can see the bgmi restarted so let's start an arena training
so you can see it's giving under 40 fps and let's try using the performance modes so if i set the cpu governor to performance and the performance profile to performance and i disable the thermal services now let's see the performance and the bgmi again restarted and i need to turn on the cape mark again so this time also we are getting under 40 fps So let me just close the BGMI. So you can see when I removed the uh, USB cable, the frame rate instantly increased. That means something is going on with my screen mirroring. So from next videos, I will not use the screen mirroring. And I hope you can see the frame rate, which is now currently more than 60 all the time. So we are getting very good frame rates now let's turn off the Sionic labs settings from the Sionic lab itself. Let's set the GPU governor to steady till and turn on the thermal configurations. And you can see after turning off the settings the frame rate instantly dropped to 40. So yeah, for a good gaming, you have to use the options in the Sionic lab. So this is it for the gaming review. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like. If you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And for the installation, you can comment below or you can watch my previous videos. The installations are same. So I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.